I have been working on the Rhombic Sterling engine again for months. The aim is to achieve the highest possible performance. Even more important, however, is to increase the reliability and endurance properties for the longest possible service intervals. This is the only way to integrate the Stirling engine into our household power supply. First, I replaced the plane bearings of the connecting rods with roller bearings. Then, a complete rebalancing was necessary. This was followed by extensive test runs to optimize the balance between friction and sealing of the piston running surfaces, among other things. Of course, a good pressure ratio is important, but as little friction as possible is absolutely essential. The Stirling engine delivers very little energy per cycle, so that this is completely used up by too much friction. A little too much contact pressure on the piston rings and the Stirling will only run with very little power. The cylinder diameter must be precisely matched to the piston diameter and the contact pressure of the piston rings. This is the only way to achieve good compression with as little friction as possible. Different material pairings of the running surfaces each resulted in different advantages and problems. I also carried out extensive tests with different tensioning rings made of spring steel strip for the piston rings. Unbent spring steel bands 0.25 mm thick resulted in problems with piston alignment and too much friction. At 0.15 mm the blow-by was too high and the compression to pull. With all 10 mm band tensioning rings 0.25 mm thick, the alignment was good but the friction far too high. I tried many piston ring tensioning ring combinations. So far I have achieved the best results with all 20 mm band spring steel strips with a thickness of 0.1 millimeters. During these test runs I once again realized the immense importance of friction in the Stirling engine. The relatively small friction differences in my test series resulted in power differences of almost 300 watts. There is a huge potential in the correct design of the running surface pairing which I still have to exploit. The Stirling engine delivers very little power per cycle, as only a small proportion of the working gas is involved in the complete Stirling process. In contrast to the combustion engine, where almost all of the working gas passes through the entire cycle. I have put a lot of work into the further development of the rhombic Stirling engine over the last six months. I have not achieved an increase in performance over the original 300 watts and the endurance characteristics are probably in the region of several hundred hours rather than several thousand. The classic Stirling engine with kinematic gearbox is spectacular and in the development is a lot of fun. However, the many moving parts and sliding surfaces cause many problems that are difficult to manage in the context of a hobby. To become a useful support for the power supply in our household, the service interval must be several thousand hours with a relatively low output of only 300 watts. I won't be able to achieve this in the foreseeable future and the next winter with low solar energy yields is coming soon.
I will definitely continue to develop the rhombic sterling engine and the half rhombic sterling, but I will also try out a completely new engine concept. I don't yet know whether the thermomechanical generator, the thermoacoustic sterling, the thermal lag sterling, or another free piston configuration offers the most potential. I will investigate the various concepts in detail in the near future, report here, and perhaps with your help decide on one. Thank you very much for your interest.